Let us. Okay, ready? Let us turn memories back far along those dreary track to a band of pilgrims filled with hope and prayers. They had left their homes, their all, to obey the Father's call. They were led to cloud the Utah pioneers. Finding here the promised land, mid those mountain bills so grand, they were honest serving God who brought them through. Nice log houses did they build, with large families were filled. Oh, they surely built it better than they knew. Chorus. Then all honor to their names, who have given us this fame. As we meet from day to day, let us lift our hearts and say, we are daughters of those grand old pioneers. As their children, when we meet, no. Oh. They're united in their way. They their flocks and herds did raise. They did care the spin and weave and make their clothes. With their faithful, honest toil, they did cultivate the soil. And they made the desert blossom as the rose. As their children, when we meet in these vales of grand and sweet, we will praise the lives of service more than gold. And we'll love them more and more as we read their histories or though the half of this great story near been told. Then all honor to their name, who has given us this fame. As we meet from day to day, let us lift our hearts and say, We are daughters of those grand old pioneers. Beautiful. Let me take a picture of it. So this lesson is on Jackson Hole, the Tetons, Beautiful. and Wyoming Road, which is all in the same area in Wyoming. So um, uh, it says that once um, they began, um, the pioneers began to go to Salt Lake in 1847 as part of the massive migration um but after Brigham Young died it says um after the death of Brigham Young in 1877 the calls continued under the direction of President John Taylor um many things left Salt Lake um you know for their different needs their family needs um some pioneers uh, who had settled in Utah and Idaho went to Jackson Hole Valley in Wyoming. And uh, and then it says they joined and established... Oh, I think I better with those off. <laughs> I don't have bifocals, so I can't see with them on their for distance. And established... Uh, new communities, including Jackson, Wilson, and Gravant. I, I think it's Gravant. I don't know. I might be saying it wrong, but oh well. Um, so, real quick. So, the reason why they called it Jackson Hole is because any valley that was surrounded by mountains, so any it was considered a hole. So, uh, and that was real quick. That was done by. Um, so what happened is um, a lady named Margaret. I think her name was Margaret. She. Uh, I gotta find the piece. She was getting mail, and in order to keep it from getting mixed up with something else. 
She said it's Jackson Hole. Mm -hmm. um, it says Margaret since uh, in late 1893, early settler Margaret Simpson um, was receiving mail at her home as there was no post office. She named the area Jackson <clears throat> Hole in order to provide an address uh, for Easterns to forward their mail west. So, but they, um, any, it says mountain men called any large valley surrounded by mountains a hole. So the area was known as Jackson Hole. Okay. Well, connected that to is from Appalachia with um, hollow, hollows. Hollow, hollows, kind of the same. Same, yeah. The same geographically in the next hollow. Yeah. That's kind of interesting how they did that. Now, um, uh, there's talks about like Lewis and Clark and John Coulter. Um, I'm not interested in, as much on those as I was on. Um, so, uh, if you go to 51, page 51, and uh, it says Mountain Men, I really liked. The mountain men um, idea or the, the whole story with mountain men. Um, so it says Jackson Hole was an important intersection for mountain men and the fur trade. The mountain passes and canyons leading in and out of the valley with streams and rivers as part of a prime beaver country. Um, drew in trappers for hundreds of miles in both north and south. Um, the greatest landmark for miles around was Les Treo, Tre, Troitis Tetons, which was named by a French um, trapper, and it means three breasts. It probably means something else, but they put breasts in here. It probably so, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Boobs. that's what men think about. You're meant to think about the boobies. Quality, quality <laughs> men. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, so it says, uh, they were also known as, uh, Anyways, we don't need to go on to what they called the mountain. It was <laughs> other names too. And then it says More to do um, with mountain movies. men living alone in extreme weather conditions for months at a time mastered the ge geography of the West, blazing trails, coexisting with grizzlies and buffaloes, fought with Indians, held off the British, suffered from hunger, and trapped for fur in the in hospitable climate. So um they were the the manly men. They were the live off the land kind of men. They were the what? Yeah, they were. they were the tough guys, definitely. So um then there so there there had been different explorers and stuff, you know, like I had said, Lewis and Clark and there was some other ones Walter. Um their guides and stuff, and a lot of mountain men were guides for the different ex expeditions. And there was a a scientific expedition in 1871, and I'm on page 53. Um, the United States Congress budgeted forty thousand dollars to survey the land that would become Yellowstone and its surrounding areas. So, yeah, so. Um, they had some surveyors and and they had an artist, uh, Thomas Moran. Um, he captured the beauty of Jackson Hole and Yellowstone area with his paintings, um, saying the Tetons had loomed up grandly uh, against the sky. From this point, it is perhaps the finest. Pictorial range in the United States or even North America. And it says the evidence presented 
for this expedition included the photographs and artwork for, uh, proved to be essential in pursuing persuading Congress to create Yellowstone National Park the next year. So, so that's a pretty long-standing national park. Yeah. I mean, that's been there a while. Yeah. yeah. So William Jackson was a photographer? Um, no. No, Jackson was actually, it was David E. Jackson was, um, he was one of the, the trappers, and he was given, they gave him honor by naming it Jackson. Oh, he was a good trapper. The trapper, yeah. Cool. He was, he was one of the trappers. Um, and, uh, but the, the artwork from, um, it said, uh, here, the, uh, William Jackson. Um, oh yeah, William Jackson, that was the, the yeah, William Jackson brought his portable dark room set up that he had on mules to take pictures. But there was an artist also yeah. that he paints too. That um, and that was all part of it, you know, to create Yellowstone. Which I mean, forty thousand dollars. It's still a lot of money, but it doesn't seem like a lot to do. You know, now it would be millions of dollars to do surveys like that now. Wow. So anyway, so and then there's some. Interesting, um, another trapper, trapper, he was, um, he was, uh, Lee, his last name was Lee, um, they called him Big Verbit because he, um, his name was Richard Lee, and it said that he, um, was a man of influence in the fire hole yellow park. Yellowstone Park and Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and west of the Teton in Idaho. So he, his knowledge of that country was unmatched for any man, white or Indian. And they had some sad stuff that happened. Um, he lost his kids and his wife uh, because they were generous and mm. uh, they died of smallpox. Mm. And then he remarried. Um, there was a funny thing about how he got his name Beaver Dick. Um, <clears throat> they said that they thought maybe Brigham Young had given it to him um, because he, uh, of his love and skill for trapping beavers, but also because he had teeth like a beaver. <laughs> so they didn't know. They, uh, I guess Brigham Young called him that, so then it stuck. And I don't know. That's what I was kind of thinking. Maybe and, he just had the stuck out teeth. Well, and I think they didn't have he, braces back then. Yeah, and it was a it was, was a defining teacher. Like he was knowledgeable. Like yeah, it wasn't like a derogatory yeah. remark like it is now. So, and I don't think they were talking about. The other part of the body, either. Mm. I think it just meant that he's knowledgeable. So um, he ended up uh, getting remarried, so that was nice. And um, uh, he died in 1899. So and he was uh, 68, so he wasn't very old. Mm. But people didn't live as long. Either. Yeah, I know. It kind of throws me off sometimes. So. They, they, I mean, the fact he had teeth. Yeah. That could have been the big thing too. I mean, I mean, a lot of these people, it wasn't like a feature of. Yeah. It's not like glamorous. It's, it's more like, hey, you got him though. Like, hey. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. And then um, his True. wife Jenny, um, they did a marker for her uh, at the cemetery. So there's a cemetery that's the Jenny B. Pioneer Cemetery. In Rexford, Idaho, which honors her and her children, which I thought that was nice. Yeah, that's good. Um, together they had six kids, right? Yeah, they had six kids, and then he had another three with his second one. Because she but passed. All of them right? died. All of his kids with Jane died. What? Yeah. Her, wait, so that's his first one, wife or his yeah, second his wife? His first wife. She should show me. So, yeah. yeah. 
And then the second one was also Indian, but a different tribe. Mm -hmm. and, and his children with the first yes, wife so, all so died. The last one, like, uh, within a year or something. And then, so it was like a year old when they lost one. Uh, they had six. And then mm -hmm. it said that when they had the smallpox, it's like Jenny died, oh. and then uh, the 24th, Anne died, the 25th. Oh, uh, no. William died, the 26th, Richard died, and the 27th, John died. Wow. And Elizabeth How old were they? The Did it say the ages? No, it doesn't didn't say the ages, that. Okay. but it's like one right after the other within days of each other. So mm -hmm. she, Jenny died on the 18th. Mm -hmm. And, and the then he remarried. But she then... was pregnant, too. Uh, so she lost, they delivered the baby, but... Didn't survive Yeah, much she longer. died and so he lost all of his kids and smallpox. And then he had, like I said, he remarried um, Minnie Black Gardner, 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 and she was, or no, he married Susan Tadpole, which was a member of the Banat Indian tribe. Mm. And then they had three, three more kids. And they survived? Yeah. It didn't say yeah. that they died. Well, when it's just, smallpox endemic, was that was pretty devastating to um, people. Yeah, three. It just says three children together. Mm. It and doesn't get the special. family went hunting together and stuff. And, oh, okay. They but, lived enough to have experiences together. Yeah. So that's good. So. And, and he then, died young anyway. You said 60. Yeah, he died 68. at 68. So. Yeah, he wasn't very old. So there's a couple of um, more uh, people that they talk about, um, but I wanted to talk about here, um, well, I already talked about that. Um, so when they were settling Jackson Hole, and I'm on six, uh, 58 now, when they were settling Jackson Hole, um, there was no water. The water was really deep. I think that's this one. Because it says that they had to hand dig irrigation ditches. So uh, when the uh, there was a family that came in, the Carn I think it's Carnes, Carnes family, um, they planted like alfalfa and um, or hay. They planted hay. And Holland and Carnes hand dug irrigation ditches for their hay crop. And so, yeah, there was some, a lot of work, and it was rocky too. The land was rocky, they said too. Yeah. So um, I'm going to skip all the way because I want to go to uh, Mormon Row. So there's some really neat stuff uh, talking about um, uh, Elijah Nicholas um, and um, his brothers and uh, different different stuff uh, there. But let me see here, where is it? Oh, I want to go to Gross Vin Vin Venture Gravat. Uh, Grove Vont and Mormon Road. So it's all the same place. It was named three different names. So it is called uh, Grove Vont now because they said that Gross Venture, which I don't know French, and it was French, um, was too hard to pronounce, so they changed it, which Gravant I think is just as hard, but that's just me. So this area was settled in 1899, which I think it's weird that we're talking about stuff that's after the pioneers, mm -hmm. even though they were pioneers. Um, yeah. This stuff is happens after, yeah. Um, because uh, there's also talk about a ferry too. There was a ferry boat ride that they did and stuff. Um, not a ride, but to get them across. Yeah, and so I'm in the middle of 67 now, okay. and it says in 1899, when the community was applying for a post office, the
The spelling of the community name was changed to Gravant, uh, as the United States Post Office, Postal Service found Gross Venture um, too hard to spell and pronounce. Later in the 20s, 1920s, the nickname Mormon Row became popular, and Gravant was only used to, uh, to refer to the post office. So I guess it's still called Mormon Row, but I think the official name is Gravant. Okay. Um, at least that's my understanding of it. Uh, so it says, uh, there was many unique challenges. Um, it says that there was only log, lodge pole pine. And so a lot of the cabins were log cabins because that was all that the wood that they had there. But it says Mormon Row is one of the only communities in the valley where stucco and wood frame houses were constructed. Which, that was weird because even Don, when I read that to Don, he was like, that's weird that they would use stucco if they had log cabins. You know, they had logs for cabins. Why didn't they just do log cabins? But I guess in this particular area, they they went with stucco. Um. It said, um, because of homesteading law, each settler could only receive 160 acres, which I have an acre and it's a big pain in the butt. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it, it does sound like a lot. What they wanted to do in the land, like the yeah, they so want cattle. cattle. Yeah. yeah, and they, it's cattle. not enough. To graze the cattle is what it says, and cultivate enough food for the animals and people. So, even though I think 160 acres is a lot, because I mean I look at that, that's like I don't know. Could that be all of Hesperia? Mm. Well, have you ever seen Stone Fox? No. Okay, good video. Check out the library, but it's because. It gets so bitter cold there. You have to have enough grain to feed that many cattle. You have to be able to maintain them. So if you can't get them off your hands, you can't afford to feed them. Yeah. And then when you take them to the next person, if the snow is real serious, you can't afford to buy them, then you're stuck. Yeah. So I guess those laws were so that they would have land that would um, give, give them enough grain to save and store so they can afford to keep their cows in the yeah, it's so, I, yeah. Well, it seems like a lot, but I guess it wasn't to graze cattle and cultivate enough food. Is it consequently many of the ranchers filed for plots under different homesteading acts, grazing their cattle in the Gross Venture Mountains and using their Mormon Road land for raising hay? So... I guess that's what they did. It said the soil in Gravant was rich, but water was scarce. Water was found a hundred feet down, and early wells were dug by hand, causing most of the farmers to make do with carrying water from Ditch Creek. Eventually, ditches were dug and carried the water all the way from the Gross Venture River. Most of the farmers raised hay along with produce, eggs, and milk. Um, today, only five homesteads remain uh, from almost 30 families that lived in the row. Mm. And then, um, so it gives like a picture of the layout, which it's also a grid. And then, um, so Thomas Alma Moulton and Lucille Blanchard Moulton this is their homestead and their homestead. So they're one of the five families that, so they only talk about the five families that stayed or that were there the longest and the ones that are there. So, um, really cool. You can see this picture of family search. So they are starting to be good. Yeah. They had some so this um this family they came from England. They were part of the Perpetual Education Fund. Oh. And um she was uh, oh, perpetual immigrating. Education funds or yeah, immigrating. I'm sorry, immigrating fund. I saw the E and then I was like education no immigrating fund back in eighteen fifty six. And uh, they came on the Thorpe 
Washington with their seven children. So it was a family of nine. And she was pregnant at the time. And she was so worried she got a blessing. And in her blessing, she was promised that she and that they would go to Utah without any worry. Safely, safely, without losing any family members. Which, that's a pretty big promise. promise. Yeah. Because they had to not only cross the seas, but they also had to cross the United States Mm -hmm. to get there. So, then, uh, okay, so the voyage was hard, and there was terrible storms, and it they lost a lot of their food supply. Uh, there was a fire. And um, they had their baby on the ship. She had her baby on the ship. And then they were on the Willie Handcart Company when they came to Utah. And talk about what a tremendous blessing to know that she was blessed before she even left England. That she would make it all the way to Utah safely without losing any family members considering they were on the really Willie. Yeah. yeah. Which is scary. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. So, of course, I told Don and he cried because I was reading it, actually. So he was like, oh, my gosh. As promised in Sarah's blessing, all members of, of the family survived and they reached Salt Lake City on November 9th. So that's pretty cool. And, um, you know, he was a tough dad and stuff. And he's like, don't you have anything to do with his, um, you know, like the friends would stop by and he would say, don't you have any work to do? Like, go home and do your own work. Don't come over here. So he was a tough dad. I kind of got that idea. So his barn is one of the famous barns. Um with the picture of the Tetons behind it. Mm-hmm. And it's, it is totally, um, it's still there. So originally he built it, it was just to house the animals. And it was a flat roof in the center. So you see that picture, it's a flat part of the uh, center part that goes uh, horizontal. That's probably where the roof was originally. Then in, um, it says, uh, in 1928, he added the hayloft and the steeple pitch, gable roof. So at the top, he added that in 1928, and then in 1939, he added the two shed into onto it. So all the way into the 1930s, almost 40. And this barn is so famous. It's, it's it's recognized in in famous work. Um, I don't know, famous, but paintings and yeah. Um, this is the today as the T A Walton barn. Um, built a house. And, um, okay, so this is the nineteen sixty. So there were still and carrying water to water their crop. And um, in 1927, a nearby community of Kelly, which doesn't have the E, like Melba's last name, Kelly. I don't know if that's a coincidence for Christ, but I'm just saying. <laughs> well, I asked her one time, you don't have the E, the extra E. And she's like, no, we're not fancy enough to have the extra E. Oh, he like that. <laughs> you know, Kelly. Yeah, L E Y. Did my feel your nose? Was destroyed. So the community was destroyed by the flood of the Gross River. Okay, but after the flood, the nearby mud springs began producing water and it allowed the community to begin irrigating their homes. So because of that flood, they got a blessing of mud springs 
and they were able to start irrigation and stuff which because the wells were the water table was so far down um in fact somebody was going to help build a well and they had dug 150 feet in a, 100 and, uh, 120 feet and he's like forget it no, yeah. That's in the next story to the 100 percent foot well. What is all that narrow space? Yes. Oh, yes. Or Mud Springs. Oh, okay. Mud Springs was called narrow space. Okay. Something I know. I don't know if it's written here or not, but I do know that you have a beautiful little place. I love it. Everybody knows that it's there. Yeah. 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 Jenny, yeah, now. Jenny nice is the lake is haunted. by the, the woman. The the woman. woman. No, sorry, sorry, that's going back. It then. is, <laughs> it is actually, and it does say it in the story. Oh, it does say it. So Jenny Lake, and then there was another one too. They're named after them. So the two lakes are named after them. Um. So then, um, the next story is of John Alfred Moulton, which is the brother of the other guy the Alma, Thomas Alma. Um, oh, okay, so, oh, he lived to be, oh, no, no, no. So John Alfred Moulton, he came at the same time with his wife. Um, and uh, their house was next to theirs, their lot of land, whatever. And it's so funny. So um, it says a few years later, when Bertha, that was Barth, Bartha, which is his wife, was in the hospital, John wanted to commemorate her homecoming by doing something special for her. He knew he wanted to repaint the house, so he chose the color he thought she wanted to paint the house for a surprise. When Bert Bartha came home to a salmon pink colored home, she was surprised, although she despised the color, she loved the sediment behind it. And it was never changed. The oh. pink house still stands, and although John is largely remembered to this day, he is most well known for the pink house. So that was that's a that yeah. one's a fancy, yeah, that's like one of the, the ones that are still house. there. It's still there. It's still pink. Can you walk around it inside? Does it matter? I don't know if you no. can. Because now be cool. they're all part of the historic like society and part of the the park. Mm. So I don't know if you can walk inside of it or not. Oh, you can? Um, yeah. So I'm going to show you the because Heritage Park has been known in the oh, okay. cemetery right up there for 100 kids, and most of the kids in the girls are in In Wyoming? No, in Utah. Oh, in Utah. Mm. So, so they probably are that one. They may have a mission now oh, at this they point. Don't. They might have missionaries there, like service missionaries. Mm -hmm. Some sort of, yeah, something. It's possible. And then it says that, I'd hope you know, so. life on Mormon Row was meant for hard work. The, the land was dry and it was difficult to farm. Water had to be hauled in from the river. And then it says that digging wells was uh, dueling. John uh, Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer, a neighbor, offered to dig a well, but after digging 120 feet of his own well without finding water, he gave up. And then it says after the Kelly flood of 1927, the mud spring began producing water. So that's pretty neat. So John lived to be 103. So this, this is the part. So I'm on page 73 and it says by 1950, when the Grand Teton National Park was expanded to include the Jackson Hole National Monument land, Many of the people of Mormon Row sold their properties. In 
1953, at the age of 66, John Ralston uh, sold his property to Grand Tetons National Park with the life lease. The conditions, the condition was um, allow him to live on the property and work the land without taxes or a mortgage until the end of his life. No one expected John to live until he was 103 years old. <laughs> well, if he like, has that lack of stress of that, I mean, that's the biggest part of stress in, like, life. Because, you know, we were just, just talking shows. about how they didn't live that long, so 68 was probably a long time to live back then, but then... When you eliminate the stress of taxes, the stress of you have your land and no one's going to tax it, you're not going to pay for any mortgage for the rest of your life, live as long as you can. (laughs) This is the crazy thing. So this freaks me out. Uh, He died in 1990. Like a year before I was born. Yeah. The year my brother was born. It's crazy. So he lived to be 103. He lived till 1990. It's amazing. It's kind of the way I think of Nelson too right now. It's just like yeah. you grew up yeah. like in 20. You were born in the 20s? Yeah. 24. You were born in 1924. 1924. So he was just, it was just 24 years before this guy died. Yeah. That's or after that yeah. he was born. That's pretty. That's pretty no, incredible. No, he died in 1990. No, no, no. But I'm saying 1924. Oh. 24 oh, years yeah. later, Nelson was born. <laughs> I mean, 24 yeah. years later, the guy who pioneered heart surgery would be born. He yeah. lived to 103. Yeah. He lived to the <laughs> no heart surgery was around. It's so crazy. <laughs> it, it, it kind of because you know we expect all these stories to take place. In the way back 17s one, or something yeah, but then this one comes <laughs> forward to the 20s the 40s the 30s no the 20s the 30s the 40s the 50s when they did the grand teton national park and then 1990 he, he died in 1990 and even his wife lived to be uh lived till 73 1973 so even that, I mean, I was born three years later. So, mm. you know, that's, um, Mind blowing. It, it is, it, to me, <laughs> it, it's kind of crazy to me that these stories are know, coming more close to comfort. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> but, yeah. There's hands that are linked. Yes. From something hard to relate to Nell's hand. Oh, and oh, and, oh, and oh, what was it that kept him alive? Maybe it's hard work. Maybe living Lack of taxes. Uh, oh. Oh, just for help. Someone's calling for me. She just said she, she came in and she was on the phone. He was calling for help, but I didn't hear him. You need to go check on him? So, anyways, so then there was other ones. Um, this one um, homestead, he gave it to his kids. So, and then they eventually they sold it to this other one, the Thomas Perry one. Um, you know, I just encourage you guys to go read all these because some of them are really fascinating. Um, uh, the one, let me see here. That one came story, kind of. But there was one here that. Yeah, it looks kind of broken. Maybe a whole thing. But... These homesteaders, yeah, they are similar. But... Yeah, but they're. Well, and they. Maybe. They have the same. Because they were all there at the same time, so all their stuff. All their stories mm, yeah. kind of line up, so they, yeah. you know, with the flood and then the the uh, not museum, but the the park coming in, mm-hmm. and so a lot of them sold their properties, and then um, some of them gave it to their kids. So like he kept it, the one guy kept it, 
and was on it, and, you know, until he died. Aren't there only about five films? There's only five. Yeah, so. But okay. one of them got, it went to his kids, and then his kids kept it, and kept it until, I want to say they kept it for a while. It was, um, I'm trying to remember which one it is. Uh, oh, the Chambers. The Chambers came later. The Chambers came in 1912. They didn't come in the 1800s. They came to Mormon Row in 1912. I have to ask my friend. I have a friend named Kelly Chambers. She never had noticed since I moved. It she might remember. be. No. Yeah. So, um, you know, he was one of the later ones. I'm not even going to go out there. But it, um, because, no. Sorry. Everything okay? No. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is everyone okay in here? Yes, everybody's okay. 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 Right, I don't know. We'll stay right here and and be fine um, where we are. Because <laughs> that's so what you said. We're fine here. Snippet here. So I have no idea. There's five I of the so. properties and five of the like houses, barns that are still there. You know, with the house and the barns. I don't know if all of it's there. Well, like the one is the barn, the pink house. And then the other guy had a two-story house, or a, it, it had a loft. Um, I don't know if it was really, like, a full two stories. Um, but, uh, so, but there's still five of the property, the original, like, I don't know original because the one guy came in, like, 1912. But there's still five. They were like maybe the, the holdouts that stayed, that didn't leave when everyone else left. And their property or their homes are still there, part of the the historic district. That's cool. Okay, so mm -hmm. they're part of, I'm trying to like get it across. Do you guys get it? Yeah. Think okay. like the Redlands Boulevard, those old homes, like it's like that, that yeah. row that you go through. It's like that is the row of... But it's Mormon row, right. older things that are still protected and and like yeah. historical well, society supported and, and stuff like that. And the park bought it. So yeah. the park district bought it. So I'm sure mm -hmm. some of the homes that were probably not as in good of shape, they probably tore down. Oh yeah, probably. And so they don't have probably... And just renovated some of them, maybe yeah, and then preserved them. The park yeah, and yeah. Wild yeah trees and stuff. right I don't know. right maybe i don't know for sure because i've never been there so me neither it's a good imagination though that's why i'm trying right. to think well, relate it to something I'm here I she's oh you have yeah. and you've been to mormon rock uh no but oh. i live in jackson hole and i've been to some of the area where um it's just land like this so just like this yeah and then there's a so there's like a barn over here and then like maybe a barn over there. Or but do you know that it's a significant barn or just somebody's barn? If if it's written in here, it's, it's significant. significant. And but you, when you're just a resident of Jackson Hole, do you have that mindset or is it just kind of like it just They just, have that mindset because anything that was pioneered has been carefully kept and preserved by the church. I mean you look at these photos, they aren't old photos. No, they're not. No, In fact, yeah. you see who's what been taken them as yeah. Ellen Jepson, and she's the president of the DP. Yeah, she wrote this lesson. She wrote this lesson. So, yeah. you know, she's not oh, doing this to bring it to our awareness. She's doing this because she's shown others. Well, in the busiest city of Jackson Hole is a tourist. It is a tourist yeah. place. Ski, touristy, real okay. touristy now. Okay. Especially for the Easterners. Yeah. So oh, love to come okay. in York. I didn't know that. So it is a touristy place, and you have to go outside of it to I see all this stuff? Outside. Well, you go outside. Well, yeah, because it's yeah. not, so like, right. It's the whole area, you know. Right. You have Jackson Hole, Western Town, and then you go out toward Yellowstone. Yeah, Yellowstone. And you're looking at the park. It's gorgeous. And so there's definitely a space. So it's like if we go from here to, like, the Sequoias, like, it's kind of in its own little space? Probably, yeah. Okay. And I'm trying to just, so I've never like, been. Well, I'm trying to try to just well, live. You know, how much, how much, how much of California seven wonders have changed so much. I don't know. You know, 
You know, it's like, yeah. oh, have you ever been to Joshua Tree? No, I haven't been to Joshua Tree. You know what I mean? But I know yeah. it's there, but I haven't been there. <laughs> I may have driven but through it and not realized it was. Again, you know, yeah, something like oh, that. Oh, the sequoias are here, but have I been? No. But right. I know, you know, it's like. <laughs> so right. that's what I wonder like, if it, this is the stuff for like the houses. Point. It's like, oh, they live in Jackson, but it's like, have you been to Mormon Road? No. <laughs> that's what I wonder. That's what I wonder if it's like the I national. Right. That's quality of work that yeah. he is. Especially yes. the winters. I know. It's crazy. It's so crazy to me to think about it. Hard, hard winters. And they've been around for a hundred years. Over some. Yeah. Cause, well, uh, the guy, the 103 year old guy, no, the guy who died at 103, oh, yeah, he his died. house is still standing, right? Well, not, not his, it didn't say his house. It oh, said his okay. barn. Well, still his but barn. I don't know what his house is. The pink house, okay. house is. The pink house is. That's his brother's house. And that's his house. brother's house. Okay. That's his brother's house. Okay. Same era? Same era, yeah. So, and I mean, then, I mean, it's like, this is over. A hundred years old, over, over. because yeah. I mean the prophet's a hundred and he was just twenty four, you know when he yeah twenty four years after he died. So I mean the fact that it's standing still, it's pretty incredible, yeah. you know. It is. It kind of. Kind that's of a structure mind. that's not like natural, yeah. right? It was, and I don't think I mean, it's decrepit either. I mean, you look at it and it looks like it looks like you should be able to walk in and take a tour, you know. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. So it says here that Mormon Row is a historical dis- historic district now in the Grand Teton National Park. Um, it is located in the southeast corner of the Grand Teton National Park in a gently sloping sheltered cove formed by the Black Tail Butte and the Cross Venture Mountains. The district is defined by a linear array of uniform building complexes lining the Jackson to Monroe Road or Moran Road. Um, the Teton Range to the northwest and is a, a dominant visual presence of the landscape. So it says the community represents late frontier Mormon settlement of high arid country, high ag- arid country, arid country. Yeah. Um, domestic and agriculture infrastructure was constructed of locally produced uh, materials and ag- irrigation systems represented the lifeblood of the community. So I think that it's a very good tribute to, and and they even say it's the late Mormon settlers, not necessarily pioneers. They're pioneers for the area, maybe. That's but, what makes them a pioneer. Yeah, but yeah, not not like the pioneers that actually came. They were pioneers originally when they came to Utah. Yeah, and then they moved on. Which is the same. I mean, San Bernardino. Is, San Bernardino is yeah. that kind of pioneer. Yeah. San Bernardino, um, Phoenix, you know, all of these other areas that are settled. Las Vegas, Do they have a temple know? in Jackson Hole, yeah. Mom? I don't know. I don't know. Was it there when you were there? No. I know so, they have a temple in Wyoming, but I don't know about Jackson Hole. Wyoming. So I think that's one checking. day. Oh, okay. Check it out. Actually, I think there is one. Really, I think it's it was so funny because I was speaking to a friend because of the you know the people who had left and then there's sometimes some sort of way that Salt Lake would feel about like Brigham Young would feel uh-huh. about the people who were leaving like San Bernardino right. with Jackson all he's like you should be here and it's this kind of like weird feelings well, he sent them and then he them back. exactly yeah. but they were like no we like it here <laughs> we're not leaving we made a life here we don't want to we don't like moving I so I think, of, but, but wait, let me finish this. I love but let me finish. I love living here. I love my calling. I have many nine year old girls. Aww. I really grew up with students and with adolescents. I love it. So it's like, I hope they have a temple. It would be the good thing. But it's like the thing of those places, right? Most of the time they don't get temples till later, right? like way later. I was right. talking to a friend who was like, yeah, that would be second coming stuff. When, when like high desert temple. Yeah. Like it's like, because it still resonates a little bit like Jackson. 
So, so maybe one day Jackson Hole might, if that'll be a second coming moment. <laughs> like, you know, like those trappers, oh, they, they left the lake. You know, it's like, oh, those gold yeah. rushers, they left, they left the lake. <laughs> but hey, one day, <laughs> maybe when Salt Lake Temple's back together. I'm ready to go. They'll be like, hey, now San Bernardino should have one. <laughs> yeah. Not before Salt Lake has theirs ring time. You know what I mean? It's like a well, little thing. The idea that they continue on, like the movie cast, you know, like their. Yeah, friends. they don't have one in Jackson Hole now. There's three dogs, so I can't find a good one. I think it was announced. I think it was announced. They may have, but it's not Jackson Hole. I would have remembered no. that. Like, <laughs> especially since you just read this lesson. There's you know? so much with it that I've got. <laughs> yeah. If I'm my age and my budget, that's when I was like, I have it out. It's really neat. And so they did, um, last year, I think, 2022, a few years ago. They did a multi-year restoration project was launched at the Mormon Row in Grand Teton National Park. Mm-hmm. So it says um, the Grand Teton National Park is uh, pleased to share that a multi-year effort is underway to preserve the stories and structures of this captivating place. Mm-hmm. Renewing Life on Mormon Row is a public-private partnership uh, par- Partnership project. That's hard to say. Public um, private yeah, partnership yeah, exactly. project. <laughs> private partnership project funded by Grand Teton National Park and the foundation uh, that will revitalize this well loved destination, providing visitors with meaningful opportunities to connect with culture, history, while immersing themselves in the Teton landscape, this will or this effort will, for the first time, uh, holistically address preservation needs of the six homesteads. So, okay, the six homesteads. So that pride is usually in their houses. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, that would make sense. Or is the homestead just the area? The homestead is their houses. The house and the area surrounding, because whatever the was their property, that's a homestead. That remains on site and includes the way visitors experience the remarkable legacy of these buildings, bringing the history of this place to life. Preservation mm-hmm. work on Mormon Road began on the Pink House, part of John Bolton's homestead. In May of 2022, mm-hmm. and will continue through 2025. Grand Teton National Park Foundation will raise three million dollars, which will leverage uh, 1.7 million in federal matching funds from the National Park Service that would not otherwise be available to Grand Tetons. Private philanthropy will significantly elevate the outcomes of this effort, allowing the stories of the iconic uh, destination to inspire mm-hmm. visitors for generations to come. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah. That's like now, I mean, it's in underway right now. Yeah. And, and it's it'll be continued till next year. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. And it just says here at the conclusion, it says the early set- settlers of Jacksonville Valley were rewarded for their sacrifice with a fertile valley, breathtaking views, and a grand a great chance of success in farming and ranching. Their stories attest to the determination of the pioneers and remain an inspiration for the history of Wyoming and the West. So that's interesting because it didn't all happen right away. You know, I mean, they didn't get irrigation until the 50s or the 20s. They got running water. Family like running water in 1927. Then they have a running water for electricity in 1946. Yeah. It was 1950 when an electrical connection came to them. 
But that still was just a year apart. I love that though. That's hard working people. Because I even just knowing I want to have the electricity, you know, and like a year later I'm gonna make it happen. You know, it's like just knowing it's like I want these amenities in my life. Like I, yes. this is desirable. Yes. And I'm gonna do the work that I need to do to make it happen. You know, so I think that's cool. It's kind of crazy. That was a good yeah. story. Uh, there was it was a good lesson. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I skipped over. Like I skipped over John Coulter, and I think that he had some really neat stuff in here too. Um, you know, he's a good uh, trapper uh, um, guide. He's a good guide. And oh, here's the. Did they talk about the Jenny Lake Ranger Station? And it was named. We talk about it in here somewhere. But yeah. So Jenny Lake and then there was another one. They were named by them. For the wife. For the wife. Yeah. So she was a big part of the community I too. So, yes. Because what they said is that they were generous and then that's how she died. Like, I wonder if it was because they were, like, opening their home or caring for a lot of sick and invalid and, and stuff. The smallpox. And that's where it killed everyone. Yes. But when it said it in that way, like, they were very generous and then she died and then she died and then they died and then they died. So it's like, she you must have been the ne nurse like, of the area. His wife died and then a few days later, one kid dies and then another kid dies. Every day, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know what people do about anything. I don't either. Like, at least I know what they're saying to their mom. Well, it's all family. There's a lot of stuff in this, in this one. So, if you get a chance to read it, I highly recommend it. Yeah. Did you guys, did you guys hear about the Soviet school soldiers? Oh, oh, gosh. Pony Pony. Oh wow! Stole the oh, stole kids for the Pony Express? I didn't know that they stole them. Oh, I don't know. But but... Says... <laughs> I didn't know either. That was. But it says here it says wanted young skinny wiry fellow with not over eighteen must be expert riders willing to risk death daily or preferred. Because you don't have parents to care. <laughs> you do die. That's a lot back then. And they're, they're um, you know, the oath that Under they 18, for I, state your name, do hereby swear before the great and living God that during my engagement and while I am employed of Russell Majors and Walden, 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 Walden Waldwell, Waldell. Waldell. Uh, Waddell. Yeah, Waddell. 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 Thank you. It's, I will, under no circumstances, use profane language that I will not drink, um, no, that I will drink no intoxicating liquor, that I will not quarrel or fight with any other employee of the firm, and that in every respect I will conduct myself honestly, be faithful to my duties, and so direct all my acts as to win the confidence of my employers so help me God. I just think that that's so crazy. But I'm like are they going to kill them after? Like why is it they want orphans and well, the Pony Express was the way of the West. It's the only way they could keep everything going from the East. Yeah, but it's like the little cargo wagon. Yeah, but right. I mean, why was it so important that they be orphans? Because it's yeah. dangerous. They would get a lot of attacks. Robbers would be the ones to take. But if it's like. Um, Okay, so if they died, it wasn't a deal. <laughs> exactly. Okay. You're ex but they're teaching, but they're, but they're swearing to live like a very honorable life. Even. Like you weren't even allowed to drink, and that was a big deal well, back then. <laughs> but that's why I think they picked younger kids too. Oh yeah. Intoxicating. They could do things that I'm sure they could. I mean, I guess they could do beer. I don't know if I probably wouldn't do that. Who knows? It's just nothing that would maybe aid you to relinquish your 
But they didn't want them. But I mean, that's the thing. So they're all by themselves. They're they got no family. And it's like then they have to live up to this code also. It's kinda well, like think about it too. Oh, you I just said that. that someone migrated with the Billy Martin handcart mm -hmm. And if it weren't for those yeah. riders, your turn. Oh yeah. Okay, Huntington and those guys. If they had mm -hmm. made that way, I mean now they're they're probably living up to a very yeah. high standard okay. when they okay. say okay. they say Yeah. That's so that's that they're going to rough provision room. Yeah. So, so yeah, there's some uh, really neat stuff in here. I totally yeah. forgot about that. I was gonna mention it, and I have it highlighted, but I forgot. <laughs> well, you read it so well because you've got a nice strong voice. Yeah. You just carry. I'm just so loud. Well. No, you carry well. Oh, yeah. you do. Ah, so. Yeah. Agree. Well, I try to pick out the stuff I like. <laughs> we could just oh, yeah. Let's put you together. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yay! The story was so good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot. That's the thing. They are so much in them that you can't get through it all. I've tried. <laughs> It makes you want to go. Makes you want to see what it, it is. Does, it, 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 it does. It does. Yeah. 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 Seeing homestead is really pretty special. Yeah. 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 I think it's funny that she hated it, but she yeah. thought that it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's still pink. It's still pink. You know, everything else, you see the log cabin barn. Yeah. They were making something different than the barn was. Yeah. Maybe she didn't like being the one on the block that everyone knew your house. Yeah. <laughs> if they were talking about the pink house, you know who they were talking about. But he's mostly known for having the pink house. He's not known for all the other stuff, you know, for being a pioneer in the area or, you know, a settler in the area, but just the pioneer. Yeah, but it's one, interesting. one thing about building a house 